All right. How many know that God wants you blessed? How many really know that God don't want you in the pits? But God wants you to have a life that's full, a life that's blessed. Is that on you? Hey, girl. How you doing? I see you and your crew. Praise the Lord. Y'all give it up for him. Amen. So he wants you to have a full life. Would you say full life? Full life. And the reason he wants you to have a full life because it testifies of him. Because he's a, he, he is good. And he wants to put you on, I'm going to say it again, he wants to put you on display for him. Now, let's not get anything about, well, my life is being maximized as I'm taught the word of God. The word of God is maximizing my life. So let's not get it twisted in any kind of way at all that everything that God does for you is for him. Let, let me try that again. Let me try that again. God does everything that he does for you for him. That's why you walk through the valley. God provides for what? For he leads you through that for what? His sake. His name. His glory. Because he wants to show himself strong in the earth through you. You got me? If there is nothing that you can do, there's no reason to come to you. Let me, let me say that in another way. If you can't do nothing, ain't no need me coming. Amen. If you cannot help me, why would I come? So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to take another look at faith. Amen. And when we take a look at faith this morning, I want, I'm going to point out some things to you that's very important to your faith. Because a lot of times we, um, we think faith, having faith and walking in faith, again, is about us. But walking in faith is about glorifying God. Can y'all hear me? All right. So God wants you to live a good life. As Jesus said in John 10, 10, I am come that you might have life and have it how? More abundantly. Is that right? So that, that, that word, the Greek word for life in this instance is zoe, Z-O-E. And it actually means the life, watch this, because this is very important for you to get. It, it actually means the life of God. All right? So he said, I am come that you might have the life of God and have it more abundantly. I am come that you might have a quality life. You got it? So God has, watch this, God has great expectation for your life. Now, I know that we've been trained and we've been told all kinds of negative stuff about ourselves. We ain't this, we ain't that. We ain't. You are made in the image of the living God. You were created by him and you were created by him. Watch this, I'm going to say this word, to dominate your life. Nothing or nobody should dominate your life. Amen. Husband and wives, neither one of you have the right to dominate the other. Nobody has the right to dominate you. Hello. And so, because no one has the, dom has the right to dominate you, you are free to live a full life. Unfortunately, <laughs> y'all love me anyway, uh, men are evil. 
full of evil. And men always try to dominate you. Always got to have somebody to put under them. Amen. But it is not the intent of God for your life to be dominated by anyone but him and you. God says, I'm the one, I teach you the prophet, so I lead you in the way you should go. He says, acknowledge me in all your ways, I'll direct your path. So we have life through God. Amen. So I want you to look at a couple of scriptures with me this morning, and then I'm going to share some other things with you. But um, one of the most important things that we've, we have in life is to obey God, to follow God, to hear what he is saying and obey what he is saying. Amen? Let me, um, in other words, obedience to God. When you say obedience to God. Obedience is simply, watch this, being submitted to someone. It's being submitted. Amen? You obey them, and that's called submission. So when it comes to God, we are to be obedient to God, that's submissive to God. So that God can do what he wants to do in our lives. He did not create you and then try to find a purpose for you. He gave you a purpose and he created you. Now remember this. Before you came into the earth, you were already in existence. As a spirit. That's why even today, you are still a spirit. You live in this body and you possess a soul. If this body dies, your spirit comes out and returns back unto God. You got it? That's very important for us to remember because, again, I am to be a steward of this body. I'm supposed to take care of it. I'm supposed to take care of it. All right? Watch this. In Psalms 32 and 8, it says, the Lord says, I will make you wise and show you where to go. I will guide you and watch over you. Now, remember, I'm reading to you from the century translation in this right now. So God says, I will make you wise. Who? Go make you wise. Who said it? God says, I will make you wise. And not only will he say, he says, I'll make you wise, but he says, and I'll show you where to go. Whoa, 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 whoa. God says he'll make me wise, and he'll show me where to go. Think about that just a moment. Think about that just a moment. The issue with God's word is not God's word. The issue with God's word is not obeying the word. The issue with God's word is not hearing God's word. Not honoring God's word. Because he says, watch this again, and he says, I'll make you wise. And I don't know why I'll make you wise. I'll show you where to go. I like that. I like that. You know, most of my life before I got saved, <laughs> and even during time while I was saved, I didn't know Cooter Brown from Johnny Brown. <laughs> as far as life. <laughs> Hello. Uh, y'all don't, ain't no need to look at me like that because y'all know y'all the same way. <laughs> and some of y'all still there. So now. <laughs> So, so God wants to show you where to go. God wants to make you wise. 
That's why the word says Jesus has become wisdom unto us. Amen. Amen, amen. So God's going to show you where to walk, right? Open your Bibles with me. I want to show you something about faith. Go to Hebrews 11. You know, I think a lot of times we misunderstand faith. Amen. We understand the walk of faith. When, you, when you're in faith, you actually are obedient to God. When you're in faith, you're actually obedient to God. Can y'all hear me? Now, in the book of Hebrews, I told you right, please look with me at chapter 11. And I'm going to read to you from the Amplified this morning because I want to show you something here. I'm going I'm I'm to, this word faith, would you hold on to that word? Watch, watch, Cause watch as I read this passage of scripture. I'm going to read quite a bit of it. Now faith is the, is the assurance, title deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. For by this kind of faith, the men of old gained divine approval. Watch this. By faith, that is with an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power and power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the worlds, the universe, ages, were framed and crafted, formed, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that, that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. By faith, listen to this. Now, ooh, Jesus, I'm going to show you something with that. This is coming up. He said, by faith, Abel. You see that? Offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain through which it was testified of him that he was righteous, upright, stand, in stand, right standing with God, and God testified by accepting his gifts. And though he died, yet through this act of faith, he still speaks. By faith, listen to this. This is, <laughs> woo, by faith, Enoch. Would you say Enoch? Yeah. Say it again. By faith that pleased God, Enoch was caught up and taken to heaven so that he would not listen to this. Good Lord Jesus, have mercy. He said so he wouldn't even have to take a glimpse of death. And he was not found because God had taken him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received the testimony, still on record, that he had walked with God and pleased him. Now watch what it says now. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that come to God must believe that he what? He is. Without faith, it's impossible to believe. So Enoch didn't even see a glimpse of death. No clue about death. Death didn't even approach him. Why? Because he walked with God, and he walked with God by faith. Can you hear me? So he walked with God so I'm a, <laughs> he walked with God so closely that the scripture says he was just not. Nah. Hello. He was not. Death, he had no glimpse of that. So that means God took him. Alive. Hello. He took him out. That's how God takes people, if you take them at all, is alive. You don't walk through here trying to find folk to take out the earth. Come on. Oh, you such a good servant. I'm going to take you out of here. I'm going to kill you and take you out. Poppycock. Poppycock. 
God, when he takes you, if he takes you, he takes you alive. There are only two recordings in the Bible of God taking somebody. And he took them both alive. But back to faith. Watch this. In verse 5 again, you have it? Yeah. <sighs> Enoch, <laughs> well, by faith, that pleased God. Enoch was caught up and taken to heaven so that he would not have a glimpse of death and he was not found, watch this, because God had taken him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received the testimony, still on record, that he walked with God and pleased him. Now watch this. It was his testimony. He had this testimony that he walked with God. That was the testimony of his life, walking with God. And because he walked with God and pleased God, God took him. Come on now. When a man's ways please God, what happens? Huh? Even his enemies are at peace with him. When a man's ways please God. So how can I even determine that I'm going to please God? What makes me able to please God? Well, he told me just in the next verse, without faith it's impossible to please him. Is that right? So the way I please God is my trust, my confident, confident trust in him. Because that's what faith is, is confident trust. I, 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 I have come to the place in these 67 years where I, I come to understand some stuff that I, I thought was different when I was younger. Amen. I come to understand <laughs> what God said is so. And I come to the place where I have determined I'm going to rest. I am not going to be bothered with the foolishness of this world. I see it. I know. I participate in the world. But it's not going to bother me. Amen. I don't give a hootie wop if, 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 if Billy the Beaver is president. And the reason I don't care is because, because God is still my God. And I don't care what go on in this nation, God got me. And because I walk with God, I come to know God. Ooh, let me show you something. Let me show you. Let me, let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Jesus, listen. <laughs> You know, by faith, Enoch walked with God. Did you know Enoch saw what Adam didn't see? Adam in the garden. You think Adam knew everything. Adam did not see some of the things that Enoch saw. You know, the scripture tells us about Enoch. Watch what it tells us about Enoch. Enoch saw what was to come. He saw the angels coming with Jesus, the host of angels coming with Jesus. God showed him. And I really believe that's a part of why he never faced death. Because he saw what was to come. Adam did not see what was to come. Y'all didn't hear me. Why didn't, why Adam, why, why was it that he didn't see what Enoch saw? He didn't see what Enoch saw because Adam was in the garden in the glory and presence of God. And there was no need for him to see what was to come. Because he's in the very presence of God. 
Amen. So when he was kicked out, all of mankind was out. Nobody could come back into the garden. But now watch this. Do y'all know that Adam and his wife, Eve, and when they fell, you know, I told you they didn't, they really didn't, it was just Adam. It wasn't Adam and Eve until after the fall. Okay? They, God just looked at them as one, as Adam. Okay? Do you realize that they had offspring. <laughs> they created a generation after themselves. And they were named Cain and Abel. Can we look at something here in Hebrews? Let me show you something. <laughs> let, let, me, let me tell you like this first. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? All right, I know sometimes we can talk a little higher, but I try to be Simple with all I say. Do you realize that the first worship was actually sacrifice? Y'all didn't hear that. The first worship was sacrifice. When you worship God, you bring sacrifice to God. So Adam had two sons, and then they had some more after that, but had Cain and Abel as the focus. Now watch what this says in Hebrews 11. Are y'all here? You sure? All right. Okay, so we know faith. We know what that's all about. Watch this. In number four, verse four. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which it was testified of him that he was righteous upright and right standing with God and God testified by accepting his gifts and though he died yet through this act of faith he still speaks dead but he still speaks because of an act watch this a sacrifice Abel's sacrifice was better than Cain's sacrifice. Yeah. Cain's sacrifice was unacceptable. It don't take faith to offer what is not right. I want to say I want to say that again. I want to say that again. It does not take faith to offer that which is not right. But when you offer that which is right, it's a real sacrifice. And then your sacrifice becomes acceptable to God. But because Cain brought that which was unacceptable. Oh, Jesus. It was not received. So watch. So it takes faith to please God. So there was no faith involved in Cain's offering. Can you see it? So without faith, it's impossible to do what? To please God. So Cain had no faith in his offering. Yeah. 
Can y'all see what I'm saying? Can y'all see what the word is saying? Hallelujah. So, so when it comes to walking in your faith and it comes to pleasing God, it's actually a sacrifice. That's why I tell you that uh, sometimes I'm, I used to watch all these old movies back in the day, Conan the Barbarian and all that old stuff and Andy. Y'all know who Andy is? Huh? Indiana Jones. <laughs> and they would always go to these different cultures. Hello. And they were always involved in sacrificing to their gods. Always bringing something to their gods. Who were false. But that's the way they understood how you treat a god. So when it comes to our god, we need to recognize the fact it requires sacrifice. Amen. Can, can y'all hear that? I mean, can, can you hear it? I'm not just talking about your ears heard it. Can you hear that from the inside, from your spirit? So, the kind of life God wants you to have is connected to your sacrifice. I think I think I'll look look at look. I'm gonna look on the ground and say it. No, the kind of life that God wants you to have is connected to your sacrifice. Do you sacrifice like Abel or do you have Cain sacrifice? As, as, as David, I believe as David said, I will not offer to God that which costs me nothing. I, I won't offer to God that would cost me nothing. If it don't cost me nothing, what God going to do with it? What, what, what is God going to do with what don't cost me nothing from me? If I don't feel it, he ain't going to feel it either. Huh? Your sacrifice, you ought to be able to feel it. You ought to feel your sacrifice. It ought, it ought to have meaning to you. If you can take a sacrifice, so-called sacrifice, and you can just flip it and don't mean nothing to you, it wasn't a sacrifice. Sacrifice ought to talk to you. And you ought to be saying, your, your sacrifice ought to be saying, I love God, I got to do it. I got a relationship with God, I got to. And if you don't sacrifice properly, if you do a cane sacrifice to God, your heart ought to be saying, wrong, wrong, wrong. If, 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 if your heart don't convict you, nobody else's heart going to convict you. That's the uniqueness of God is that you have a personal relationship that does not matter to anybody else but you. We come together, we come together as a group, we come to encourage one another, we come to strengthen one another, we come to hear the word, we do that. We come because the word of God says, not forsaking the cells of ourselves together as the man of some is. So we come together, but I have my personal relationship with God. When I can come together with you, that's a bonus. Because I want God life. So my God life, the life that I want is mine, watch this, on my own. Nobody else can determine for me how God going to treat me. 
Nobody. How we say in that song? No, no, no. No, no, no. Nobody like you. <laughs> huh? So, so the whole thing is, is, is if I feel that way about my God, then when I walk this life out, don't you look at me. Don't you look at me and say, why he got? I got because I'm an able offerer. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm an able man. I'm not a Cain man. I'm an able man. So because I'm an able man, not a Cain man, my life is full. Because I got the right mind towards my God. And I have the right heart towards my God. Okay, I sinned. What, what about it? What about it? I got somebody I can go tell it to. And then it's gone. I go tell my father. You ain't got to tell me. I go tell my father. My father said he cleansed me. Forgives me. You know what that means? He keep me on the same track. He don't kick me out. Don't kick me back. Men do that. God don't. That's why he said to watch that. That's why he said to, to reconcile one and bring people back to God. Don't kick them to the curb. The God kind of life is given because of the goodness and the grace of God. It ain't because you earn nothing, but at the same time, you ought to do what's right. Because if you're willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. He said, that's what he said. I didn't say that. He said, he said if you're willing and you're obedient, baby, you're going to eat good. Amen. Amen. So you ought to expect goodness if you're able to offer. If you can't offer, you can't. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. Amen. We have to, we have to, we have to, whether you like it or not, even today, we still have to fear God. Do you know what Enoch means? <laughs> the name Enoch, you know what it means? Dedication. It means obedient. It means inclined towards. So in other words, every time you call him, you just call him dedicated, committed, calling him all that. And that's what he was walking in. It's a wonderful thing to know God. It's a wonderful thing to walk with him. It's a wonderful thing to have a life connection with him. Now, I am going to say something right now that uh, probably you ain't going to like it, some of you anyway, especially those of you watching by internet. But bless you anyway. Can you handle it? You ain't got no truth of your own. There's no such thing as your own truth. I'm going to live my life according to my truth. You're going to die. I'm serious. You ain't going to make it. Because anything outside of the will of God, anything outside of his truth is a lie. Whether you call it a truth or not. It don't matter what you call a lie. A lie is still a lie. 
You can put a fine suit on a lie and it's still a lie. You can call it whatever you want to call it. It's still a lie. That little fear, a lie. So the only truth there is, is from God. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth. Not a, a truth, I am the truth. So he said he's the way. And so if you tell me you are another way or you got another way, you lie. That's why when other people, they tell me about joining together, y'all excuse me for this, when, when they tell us all the, all the different religions we need to come together, If I believe your God is a God, then I, believe, I don't believe what my Lord said. So it ain't no confusion to me. I'm not, I'm not, I believe Christ. I believe in Christ. I believe in Jesus the Christ. I believe in the one true and living God, and I don't think he 400 different gods. And he's always shown himself strong to me. I have never, ever gotten in anything that looked like it was going to take me out that he didn't deliver me from. It wasn't no man, it was God. When you're about to die, and God raise you up, you go tell somebody else that's the other stuff. Because <clears throat> I've seen him work with me. When doctors say, hey, if you don't do this, you're going to die. When God do otherwise. <laughs> Ooh, thank you for being a king offerer. trying to see. I'm just trying to see if y'all listening. So I, I, I want to, I want to, can, can, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Can I say it? I say, oh, I'm glad I'm a cane offer. Somebody say, hey, man, glory to God. Yes, I'm a cane offer too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, I am so glad I'm an able offer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you don't remember anything else, guys, to do in your life, know this that God sent Jesus for you to live the God kind of life. That's why I love Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, and the Amplified. God has already, already made paths. The word said he made paths ahead of time for me. That I can walk in those paths, living the good life. I know we go through challenges. We all have challenges. But the good life is yours if you get on the right path and walk with him like Enoch did. And Lord, I don't want to be that close to you yet. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> so God wants you to have a good life. Amen. Matter of fact, let me, let me change how I say that. God wants you to have the good life. His life. His life. His life. And to have it more abundantly. How many of you know what pain is like? Heart pain. Emotional pains. Jesus, Jesus, 
is the answer to every broken heart. Every heart challenge. Jesus is the answer. He loves you so much that even while you are yet in your sin, he died for you. Think about that just a moment. But the awesome thing about it is God didn't send somebody for you. He came himself. He came himself. Came himself. Came himself. <laughs> you know the word and God are the same? So when God sent his word, he sent himself. Came for us <laughs> to give us fullness of life. All you got to do is hear him and receive him. Life is in him. Nobody else. Life is in him. Life is in him. You know, there's a rest. The Bible talks about that God has. It remains a rest for those that want to enter in. And you can enter into his rest. Have you ever had peace in your mind? You ever had peace in your body? Yes. Have you ever had that kind of peace where it's just like, whew. that's what he offers you. Because I don't care what you go through, you still can rest. <laughs> care how much trouble try to rise up, you know you're taken care of. You know God got you so you can rest. Loves you so much. Loves you so much. By faith, you can have it all. By faith, you can have it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let me ask you this question. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Have you, have you really accepted the Christ? Ooh, Lord Jesus, thank you for that one. Listen to this. <laughs> Some people have given themselves, watch this, to God as Cain offerings. And Some have given themselves to God as Abel offerings. Sell out to God. Sell out to God. That don't mean you get religious and run around here, you can't talk to nobody, you can't say nothing. You can't see a movie. You can't do nothing. No, you live your life with the consciousness of God. God never told you, you can't. That stuff comes from men, comes from religion. Get free from religion and receive Christ. Receive the life of God. So if you never accepted Christ, you're not in relationship with him right now, this is a wonderful time for you to say, Christ, I accept you, Jesus. I want to receive you into my life today. I trust you. I want to trust you. So if that's you all in the, in the building, all over the building, if you lift your right hand out of your head saying, Pastor, I want to receive Christ today. Those of you that are viewing by internet, give you the same question. You can, you can contact us. The information is right there on your screen and we'll follow up with you. Because the whole aim, the whole goal of everything we do, the bottom line is Jesus and getting people of God, people period, into God, getting people into service of God, loving God and receiving from God what God has for you. Amen. 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 Love you so much. Love you so much. Now, let me, let me close with this. <clears throat> if you have received Christ, you've accepted Christ, you don't have to live your life trying to get into the glory, to heaven. 
trying to get in. You're already in once you accept him. So just begin to live a life <laughs> that's pleasing to him. That's all you have to do. Just obey him. Do you know every good thing is, 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 is as a result of obedience? You hear God, you do what God tells you to do. It's that simple. People try to find all kinds of ways to thinking that it's so difficult to serve. No, baby, it's easy to serve God. It's easy to walk with God. It's easy to love God. You know what the Bible say? The Bible say the way of transgressors is hard. So if you do what's right, you walk before God, and when you mess up, you confess it and you keep on going. Your way not hard. We make our own ways hard by disobedience. The commandments of God are not grievous. Amen. Obey God, there won't be no grief. <laughs> love you so much. Accepting Jesus, we are so, so excited for the awesome decision that you just made, the best decision that you could have made in your life. Hey, we want you to do something for us. We want you to follow up. We want to know that, about the awesome decision that you just made and what God is doing in your life. So there are some ways that we want you to connect with us. Go to praiseone.org slash connect and you can connect with us there. Or you can leave a comment or a message under this video right now. We want to help continue to support you as you go through this journey. Hey, subscribe to our channel and like this video. We'll see you for another upload soon. And remember, we are maximizing your life with the word of God.